Hi everybody. Good afternoon. How are you today? It's Wednesday and I'm coming to you live on Wednesday instead of Friday because I'll be out of town. Now, somebody needs to come on and tell me I'm in the right place. You know, once you go live in the wrong place, you're paranoid. Yeah, I think so. I think I see myself. Nice. Oh, you're paranoid. definitely don't want to hear my voice. Okay, I see some of you popping on. Good. I think we're in the right place. You know, um, doing Facebook Live is very nerve wracking. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Marion. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm seeing comments now. All right. How are you guys today? Hi, Gina. How are you? So I'm doing Facebook Live today because I leave. I have a 6 a.m. flight tomorrow. Why do I always get the 6 a.m. flights? Um, I'm going to Lansing, Michigan to be with my friends Rhonda and Angie. And we are doing, um, Rhonda's doing a convention for demonstrators. And um, Angie went, was going to go to present. And I said, well, if both of you are going to be there, then I have to go. So I'm going and I'm going to do some um, pre a presentation and some stamping too. And I can't wait. I'm so excited. Hi, guys. Crystal, I'm good. I'm glad you needed a break from work. Um, I know how that goes. All right, so I'm going to jump right in. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining me. Yes, um, Marianne, it, I'm glad you guys like it. Um, Facebook Live it gets a little bit easier, but there's still that like oh, at the beginning. Okay, so um, this week, Halloween. I um, thought about not doing Halloween this week and waiting, but I thought, you know what, you guys, we're getting about... Um, a little more than a month out. So if you're gonna do Halloween projects, you're gonna need to get those orders in. Um, so that's why we're doing Halloween this week. All right, so let's get started. Let's jump in. If you've never joined me for Facebook Live, I wanna call it Facebook Friday. We'll just call it Facebook Friday because that's what it usually is. And today's just Facebook Friday on Wednesday. If you've never joined me for Facebook Friday, I do three projects and I type up a PDF that looks like this for all three of them. And it's over on my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. Hopefully it went live as of right now. I try to time them at the same time. And this PDF is down under the third picture, okay? So uh, people seem to not be able to find it, but just know I always link it right under the last picture. And it has um, all the products I'm gonna use, as well as the measurements right here. And then on the second page, there's the third project. But there's also some announcements here. And the biggest one that I wanna tell you guys is that my cauldron bubble set um, class to go deadline is Friday, right? Friday, nine, I have the wrong dates on here, 920? Oh no, that's for country home. 921, when is that? Um, Friday, okay? So if you want this class to go, six Halloween projects that use the cauldron bubbles, bundle you've got to register by Friday and I'm gonna actually have to turn it off because the framelits have gone on back order um, I kind of did some guesstimates yesterday um, I have already ordered for everybody who's registered so we're good um, and then I did a few little estimates of what I usually add on on the last couple days so I'm gonna be watching it closely and I'm gonna have to turn it off as soon as I hit that number um, these will be prepped next week and ship on Friday. So hopefully you'll have them by the first week of October and you can start making all your Halloween treats, okay? Now, to find this class, that, that um, link is right here. You can type it in um, if you're looking at it or copy and paste it and you'll find it, okay? Um, the second thing that I wanna tell you is that here's the tutorial bundle for this month. Um, I am part of an amazing group of ladies. You can see some of these amazing ladies. And we all do one tutorial a month, and we put them together. And um, then we offer them for free with a $50 purchase. You can also get it for $15 in my PDF store. So if you decide to order today um, in connection with Facebook Friday, you probably wanna bump your order to at least $50 so you'll get this for free. I email them out once a week. I go back and I check all my orders and I send them to everybody who um, has ordered in the last week. So um, the details on that are also on here. Right here, I'm not backwards this week. Right here. 
Um, and you can also scroll back to last week when I did a um, blog post about it. All right, the third thing I wanna to talk to you about is my Stamp Club To Go. You know, I really haven't been talking about my Stamp Club To Go in a while. Um, Stamp Club is how I started my business. Uh, eight, nine years ago, I had teacher friends who were interested in doing stamping. And I joined Stamping Up and then we made a club. And so we would meet once a month, make three projects, and we would take turns getting the hostess rewards, um, the stampin' rewards, the free stuff. And so as my business has evolved, it's now completely online. And so when you join Stamp Club to go, you join for six months, and it's kind of like a virtual stamp club. Instead of sending you a make and take kit like I do for Facebook Friday, I actually send completed projects. Um, Stampin' Up! has a rule where I can't stamp a piece of paper and mail it to you. Um, the only way I can send a stamped image to you is if the project is done, like a completed card. So that's how I do my stamp club. Um, I send everybody three com completed projects. Um, so when we started, it was scrapbooking. Everybody was in scrapbooking. Um, and then I realized along the way that some of the ladies who were coming weren't making the scrapbook card. They were just making a um, scrapbooking page. They were making the other two projects. And I realized not everybody scrapbooks. So then I changed it to have one card, one 3D project, and then the third project was still the scrapbook page or an alternate card. And I will tell you that I have um, now, majority of everybody chooses that alternate card, which I find interesting. Anyway, if you're interested in joining that club, um, email me. It's a six month commitment and you put in a $35 minimum order every month for six months. And one of those months, you're gonna get the Stampin' Rewards for your group. And so I thought I would just take a second to show you the projects that, we, that I'm sending everybody this month. The scrapbook page, of course, is the Toil and Trouble, Cauldron Bubble, all that fun Halloween stuff. And then here's the alternate card. I usually try to make the card um, similar to the page as much as I can. So this is what they got this month. I don't know if I've put this on the blog yet. So that's one project. They get either the page or the card. They tell me which they want. Then I always have another card. And of course, my country home, little favorite country home. That was the card that they got, and they get it completed. Remember, it comes completed um, because I can't send just stamped images. And then this month they got the takeout treat box, um, which we're gonna make today. So if you're interested in Stamp Club to go, let me know, uh, email me. I have a group that's starting in October. They also always get the catalogs. They are the first ones that I mail it to. Um, they, If they are a Stamp Club member in May and June, they get a spiral bound annual catalog um, and you get free goodies, which is always great. Um, one month you get free goodies and that varies between 30 and $40 worth of free product one of those months. And sometimes it's more if there's an incentive. Sometimes Stampin' Up! adds stuff to it. Like this month, they got the 12 by 12 um, Dashing Along Designer Series paper that is free with a $250 workshop or individual order. So those girls whose groups are over 250 are also getting that. So it's a great deal. So email me if you want more information and I'll be happy to give it to you. Okay, so that's all the announcements. Um, prizes, let's do prizes. Um, I always ask, where did I put, okay. I always ask for you guys to share the video. Um, that helps me find new customers when you share the video. So I do appreciate it. And I already see some of you sharing without me even asking. So thank you. I am grateful for that. Most of my business these days is online. And so I'm always looking for new customers and new, new stampers, people who are looking for stamping and projects. To, delivered in their mailbox. So when you guys share, that helps me. I appreciate it. So last week I was giving away two stamp sets. So I picked at random two people who shared the video. Betty Schuler. Betty, I think I have your, e your mailing address, but if you'll email it to me, please, that'd be easier. And Jean Hoffman and Jean, I don't have your mailing address. So please email me where I can mail these to you guys. Now the winner of the raffle copter, which is that second giveaway over on my blog, you scroll down to the bottom and you enter your information and it picks somebody, is Deepa. And Deepa and I've already been in contact today. She's getting the pick a pennant bundle. So congratulations, Deepa. Um, 
This week, I've got two packs of paper to give away for sh sharing the video. This is the Tropical Escape paper, six by six, very, very, very popular. Um, so I will pick two people next week to get the Tropical paper. I know maybe it's not tropical season, but we'll still use it, it's beautiful. And did you guys get your favorite pumpkin? I told you I was crazy this month and I got a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna give two of them away. Do you guys wanna see it? I feel like I am always the last person to get paper pumpkin and I usually have already seen it online. So if you don't wanna see it, close your eyes right now. I'm giving you fair warning, okay? It's super cute. There are, close your ears if you don't wanna hear. Close your ears, mute me. 24 treats. And you know, you always need Halloween treats. Look how cute they are. I haven't even opened it. But the stamp set is fantastic. Fantastic. Look, so stinking cute. And what's the ink that we got this month? Basic Gray. It always comes with an ink spot. So I've got two of these to give away. So that is on the raffle copter over my blog. If you didn't get this paper pumpkin kit this month and you like it for free, please go over to pinkbuckaroo.com, scroll down, enter your information, and I will pick two winners next week. Okay, so last but not least, I always send my make and takes for free with a minimum $30 order between now and Monday, Monday at midnight. And this is what, um, not last week, but week before last looks like. Yes, everything comes for you. All you have to do is stamp. Remember, I can't include stamped images. Um, this is a little tag. You're seeing a stamped image when I say I <laughs> don't. But that's my thank you tag. I always include a thank you tag. It's completed. Calm down. Anyway, the projects are here. Uh-oh, low, low network, you guys. Be patient. Connection available. Are you guys still there? I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to keep going. So, make and takes for free. you got to use the host code, which is on this PDF right here. Where did my PDF go? It's on the PDF, and you have until Monday. If you don't use that host code, I will not send you. I have, in the past, just started sending them to people who didn't use the host code. See right here? However, I'm not going to do that anymore. You have to use the host code unless, asterisk, unless your order is over $150. When you hit that $150, you get stamping rewards. That's free stuff, and I want you guys to get that. So if your order is over $150, don't use the hostess code, host code. Don't use it. I will see you, and I will add you, okay? I think I had 26 packets go out yesterday for last week's Facebook Friday. No, today. went out today for last week's Facebook Friday. So thank you everyone who's ordering. You guys have made my year amazing. I keep having record years and I owe it all to you guys and I appreciate it, so thank you. So Christine is saying I'm glitchy. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I know, I wish I had technical skills to understand all of that, but it's the internet and my recording and upload will be HD and unglitchy, I promise. All right, so I'm gonna turn you guys around and we're gonna get stamping. What time is it? 2.12. Remember, I have to go pick my daughter up at three. All right, so I'm gonna turn you guys around and if for some reason I accidentally hang up on you, come back and find me because you know I have two stands. We do this every week. I feel like I'm saying the same thing. All right, now you guys tell me when we're straight. I can't stand scrolling through all week and seeing my live and it's crooked. There we go, what do you guys think? I can actually move some of this over, get it out of the way. I'm very excited about my trip. Um, not only am I gonna see my buddies, yeah, that's not straight and I can't stand it. Not only am I gonna see my buddies, but I'm going to get some training also. I love to learn what people are doing in their business and how they're running their business. And she always has lots of display stampers, people who um, have set up displays to show projects and stuff. So I'm very excited about that. All right, I'm looking. Looks like it needs to go down like that. There's such a delay on Facebook Live. If you've never done Facebook Live yourself, <laughs> you just have to know that it is insane. It's crazy. And it's 
glitchy and it changes and you're just, it's never going to be perfect. But the good thing for you guys is that I have pre-recorded all of these videos. So they're going to be clean recordings over in my YouTube channel. I probably won't get those up until tomorrow. I plan on doing that on the airplane. I'm gonna edit those. They're already filmed, but I just gotta edit them. Okay, so I told you my product of the week this week is the Spooky Bats Punch. We've had a bat punch in the past, but it was just a single bat. And what I like about these bats is that they are all flying in different directions. Some have their wings down, some um, have their wings up. This one I really like, this one right here. So it's really, um, it's really fun and it's a great way to add um, stuff to your projects without stamping and tomorrow I've got something planned to show you an alternate use for this punch it's really um, not just for Halloween you you will be surprised when you see it okay so we're gonna make three projects and we're gonna start with this one and those of you who've been around for a while will not be surprised to see what's inside this is a hand sanitizer from Bath and Body Works, Vampire Blood. Yes, I told you we would have blood splatter today. I know, and somebody rolled their eyes on my post. I know, you don't like blood splatter, you think it's dumb, but you know what, I think it's funny, and so do my kids. We love to get the vampire and witchy, you know, like creepy Halloween stuff. We don't like scary Halloween, but we like creepy and things with puns and stuff. So I always go there, I can't wait for the Halloween stuff to come out, so that's what this is. And this actually, this design was one of the first things I ever did, a tutorial on years and years ago and it it was the very very first thing I ever did that really like took off that people um, were messaging me about that was being I don't even know if Pinterest was then but it was it was kind of my first taste of online like ooh, you know like I like this I like putting things online and people liking them so I have done many many versions of the um, hand sanitizer holder because Everybody likes it, and they're only a dollar. They're only a dollar, <laughs> Cindy. And you know what? I looked on bathandbodyworks.com this morning, and you, know, you can only get it in a group of five, and they're all different. So there's that. But the store had a lot of them. So I am not using um, the stamps that go with it. With the, I'm sorry, the stamps that coordinate with a bat punch. I'm using two stamps actually from the annual catalog. This one is Timeless Textures, and here's our blood splatter. Remember I told you last week, those are two words you probably would not expect to hear on my Facebook Live, blood splatter. Um, and then we're gonna use like this tire tread and then this, this kind of grid. And then this one is a set that came out last year that we loved, everybody loved, it matches that everyday label punch. And we're gonna use that stamp right there. Um, okay, so let's make the holder first. Sorry, I have to rearrange everything. Um, now remember, I know I say it over and over, but the measurements are over on the PDF, right here, okay? And this one's right here, so I actually have to look at it. This is a piece of basic black, two and a half by 11, and it's got a lot of score lines, half an inch, and one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, and then six and three fourths, and seven and three fourths. Now this morning when I made this video, I was missing one of those measurements. So I corrected the PDF. Hopefully it's linked up correctly. Um, it's that, I think it was the two and a half one that I was missing. All right, so now we need to create an opening right here. And you know what, before I do that, I'm starting to second guess myself. Let me fold it all in. Basically you're gonna fold all these score lines and it's gonna kind of curl up into itself. Yeah, that's right. See how it makes that box? I'll show you that in a second. But let's look at it again. This is where we started scoring. This is that half inch side right here. Then this is that first one inch section. And that's gonna be the section that holds our vampire blood. If you're just joining me, you're probably like, what in the world is she talking about? Well, don't worry, it's just hand sanitizer. I better put it right here so everybody knows. <laughs> now the thing I found that held the, I did lots of experimenting over the years to see what holds this the best. And the thing that I found actually was a suggestion from a customer many, many years ago. And it's the smallest, we used to have a scallop punch, but we don't have that anymore. So now it's the smallest 
scalloped framelit from the layer, no, did I say oval? Smallest oval scallop framelit from the layering oval framelits. And we're gonna cut that out of that very first one inch section. And it is almost too big, almost too big, so don't panic. I know, it still works. All right, now we're going to, I got organized with my adhesive this week and put it in a basket. I'm so proud of myself. I wonder how long I'll be able to keep it like that. Tear and tape right there on that half inch, um, half inch tab. <laughs> Jen, oh, that's funny. I read it. Jen says, I'll suck your blood. And I read it in the vampire voice before I even saw that. Okay, so fold, fold all the same way, okay? Now we're gonna take this and we're going to adhere it to the back side, and you wanna make it square. So look at it as you're adhering it and make sure it's pretty square, okay? You guys see how that, that worked? And then your vampire blood could go right in there. This would be great for nurses, for schools, for anybody. Now before you start adding things to the front, you need to put your twine, and I was very worried I was gonna to forget to do this. We're gonna take the basic black twine and wrap it around and tie a bow here at the bottom. We want to put this on first so that we can adhere the paper over it and that will keep it in place. And it's just kind of a light little um, tie at the bottom to keep, to keep it closed. All right, let me scoot it to the bottom. Thanks Susan for sharing. All right, so there's the box. Now let's make all the spooky decorations. You're gonna need a piece of Whisper White. This is two and three eighths by three and an eighth. And we're gonna use Smoky Slate on the grid and just kind of random, however you wanna do it, mm, like that. And then, I'm gonna leave that open for a second. Now I'm using stays on black this week, you guys, and there's a lot of discussion about black inks. The reason I am using stays on, number one is because my stamps are rubber. Red rubber stamps are totally good with stays on. When you start using your photopolymer with your stays on, if you leave the ink on too long, it's gonna start eating away at that photopolymer. Now, that's not an official Stampin' Up! statement. I'm just saying that from experience. I try to never use stays on with my photopolymers. But stays on is a really good, rich black color. And what we're gonna do on the next project, I really needed stays on for that. So I just decided to use stays on all the way across today. Of course, Memento will work as well. All right, so this is the tire grid, the tire marks. Um, stays on is a pigment ink, which means basically that you cannot use it with your blends. Okay. Do not use stays on with your stamp and blends, but if you're going to watercolor, you can use stays on and it won't smear with the water. I know it's very confusing. All right. Time for some blood, blood drops. If you've got boys, they would love this. I have a tomboy and she loves it. Real red and the little drops. All right, so now we're gonna make the tombstones with this punch and this is the Christmas Traditions Punch. I don't know if you guys have seen in the very first page of the holiday catalog, I have it right here. I almost missed it, but the very first page right here, there's a punch box. It's got this beautiful tin. It's got a stamp set and a punch and two spots as well as the block. So it's a great little gift set. Um, and so that's the punch there that I'm using. And it's called, I had to look it up. They're calling it the Christmas Traditions Punch. Um, now, there's other punches you could use, probably for this tombstone too, if you don't have it. Um, but this is a one and a fourth inch strip of basic gray, and I didn't cut it to length because I just wanted to put it on there and kind of snip it off to wherever I wanted. So see how I kind of fed it through the punch like that? Not the traditional way to use the punch, and it's just gonna punch the top of it. All right, so same over here. 
And then it looks like it could even be a little bit bigger than one and a fourth, maybe one and three eighths. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna age it with a sponge and some Smoky Slate ink. I think I have basic gray listed on the, the project sheet, which is what I think I used in the beginning. And when I when I filmed this, this video this morning, I totally forgot to do the next step until the very end. So you'll see me like, oh, whoops, okay, let's add the sweater. But I was hoping I would remember today. We're gonna take out that, I'm gonna move this out of the way for right now. We're gonna take out some more shimmer paint. Remember we used shimmer paint last week. This time it's champagne mist. And I probably should have done this first so it would dry. And I'm just gonna put a little drop there. I need to move everything out. I'm gonna get my aqua painter and just kind of splatter that. Last week I got these awesome little like, like I don't know, these really cool splatters across. But today it's not doing that for me. But anyway, the little spooky splatter will be great. All right, so that was an aqua painter and the champagne shimmer. Well, I'm gonna set that aside to dry for a second. Let me get a paper towel to wipe off my workspace. I am loving the shimmer paints now that I'm remembering to use them. All right, let's go ahead and do some stamping while we wait for that to dry. We're gonna stamp, where did it go? Right here. <laughs> We're gonna stamp the sentiment in that stays on black. You guys are quiet today. Are you all working? All right, now I'm gonna cut. If you don't trust yourself to do it straight, just get your trimmer. And I, But I'm just gonna do my scissors right here across. And, Cause that is super cute, that whole thing. However, way too big for my project. I just want that have a haunting Halloween. All right. So we've got that. Now we need the bats. And this is black foil, which is new. And I am praying they carry this over because this is awesome. And I said last week, it's kind of like um, patent leather. Reminds me of my shiny tap shoes when I was a kid. All right, I'm gonna punch out a few of these bats like that. And I think we're ready to put it together, hopefully our paint is dry enough that I'm not gonna smear it all over everything. All right, so I'm gonna take dimensionals and I'm gonna start with one of these tombstones. <laughs> Terry, oh, you, you remind me of me when I was at work, I know. My um, conference period when I was a teacher was at the end of the day, two o'clock, and um, I would do the same thing. But we, we couldn't get Facebook on our computers. I had to do it on my phone. All right, so there's that one. Now this one, why do I keep losing things? They're right under my nose. I'm gonna do this one a little bit lower and it's gonna be overlapping. Can you guys see that shimmery uh, champagne? I love it. And then I'm just trimming it off. It's probably gonna drive some of you crazy that I didn't give you exact measurements for that, but I don't know, that's just how I did it. All right, now for the sentiment, of course, a dimensional. You know, I don't like how far away this is. I'm gonna have to figure something out. I want you guys closer down here. Oh no, it looks like my phone's gonna fall out. I'm not touching it, I'm not touching it. Okay, now we're gonna take the mini dimensionals for this bat and let's put him on the tombstone right here. This is my favorite bat of the three. There he is and then I'm afraid my phone's gonna fall, but I don't wanna touch it. Yeah, it really looks like it's about to fall. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Hopefully it's not crooked anymore. All right, there's a mini dimensional and one of the other bats like that. And last but not least is a cute, tiny spider trinket. Is that what they're called? Yep, spider trinkets. Have you guys seen these? Now I know some people hate spiders and I don't love spiders, but I don't, 
I'm not, you know, freaked out by them, but these are so cute. And you can see it has a little ring on it um, so that you can, you can tie, like twine through it and tie it onto a project. But we don't want that on this project. So I'm just taking an old pair of scissors and clipping it off. It's very, very thin. You could use like fingernail clippers probably to clip that off. Um, okay, so now it still has this tiny little circle here and I'm gonna take that and just kind of put it, hide it there. Oops, no, not that far, spider. It's trying to hide completely. Hide that little tiny circle behind the sentiment there. Okay, all right, I think we're ready to put him on the cover. Okay, I'm so confused by, <laughs> by my adhesive being in a basket very confusing because usually it's everywhere all right just some adhesive and remember we put that twine on there so that this would hold it in place and then the twine is there and that is it so cute isn't it and now I have three of them done I love it I hope you guys love it that timeless texture stamp set is one that everybody can use adding texture to your stamps I mean to your projects that's like coffee you could use that with a coffee set really 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 good set and this one too if you didn't get this one last year um, I love that I forgot about that one I need to put this down on my bottom shelf I keep all the new stuff on my bottom shelf because I try to focus on all the new stuff but some of those are so good. I forget that there's any holiday stuff in the annual catalog, but there is. Okay, let me pack up my tray and we will move on to the next project. The next one does not have candy in it. It may look like it, but it does not. I'll show you what's in it. I found something really fun at Walmart in their Halloween section. Our Walmart has two Halloween sections. There's a candy section that's over on the grocery side. And then there's a, like the, you know, where they have all the costumes and stuff. So, um, and trick or treat stuff. So that's where this was. And inside is one of those sticky hands. You guys, do you know, <laughs> I feel funny, silly saying that. Do you know sticky hands? Well, if you have kids, you know sticky hands. There are these. And I actually cut the top off, and so I don't know what it was called. But sticky stuff. There's 50 in here. It was like six bucks. Um, these would be great um, if you have a Halloween event that does not want candy. Like our school, our kids' school, they can't. You can't send any candy. Um, so sticky hands. You like they fling it, and it sticks to something, and it's like I don't know. It's really funny. However, it will leave a greasy print on your ceiling. Ask me how I know. I have three kids <laughs> but they love it they just know they cannot do it on the ceiling and not the walls either all right so we're gonna make a little holder for that basically it's a matchbook that's the word I was thinking this morning to my video I could not think of that word it's a matchbook design and this time I am using the stamp set that coordinates with the spooky bats punch called spooky sweets and it, if you get these two together, you actually save 10%. So make sure you guys, and I did not list that on the PDF. I listed them separately. But just so that you know, right here in this, this little orange or coral box, that's where you can get the bundle numbers. And the Clearmount bundle is only $30.50, which is really um, a pretty cheap bundle. So make sure you look for those bundle prices. All right, let's put this, let's get this cute thing together. Uh, let's make the spooky scene first. And do you see that moon right there? That is embossed with pineapple punch embossing powder. I have had these since the catalog came out and I haven't used them and I've been waiting for a reason to use those. So I thought that that was perfect for the moon. It would really pop off that uh, Blackberry Bliss cardstock. And uh, it does, it's super cute. All right, so now when you're gonna heat emboss, you wanna rub the paper with your embossing buddy. Embossing buddy is like a little bag of baby powder. I don't know really what it is, but to me, that's what it seems like. And that's what I call it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna stamp that moon and verse mark. And don't make fun of my verse mark pad. It's been well loved. It's supposed to be white, you guys. 
you've never seen a Versamark pad, but it works just fine. All right, now we're gonna sprinkle on that pineapple punch embossing powder. Look how bright neon yellow it is. There we go. All right, now we have to hit it with the heat and I am using, uh-oh, no, don't do that. The light just came undone. Boy, that scared me because I thought we had a rabbit disaster, but no. The rabbit, if you've ever had a rabbit, they like to chew cords. They really like apple cords, apple product cords. And it's just constantly fighting, keeping those cords picked up. Pretty soon it's going to be cool enough where they're going to be outside 24-7, which is going to be awesome. All right, so you hit it with a heat tool, and you can see, hopefully, you can see it's starting to turn kind of shiny. And when I, when I was designing this project, I Googled spooky night images to see kind of what it looked like. And they were all mostly purple, so that's why I decided to use the Blackberry Bliss. Um, because I guess that's kind of like, you know, the after the sun's setting and... And I wanted to use Blackberry Bliss, which is great. Okay, so back to the stays on. And I'm gonna stamp these bats. Now I'm finding, let me show you guys, when you punch the bats, when you stamp the bats, and you're going to put them in, you need to do them towards the top of your paper. And it seems like every time I stamp these, I have to trim my paper because I haven't, stamp them quite right. Now that I've done it about 40 times, hopefully I've learned how to do it. All right, so turn your punch around and look on the back. Yep, see, I need to trim just a bit. It's angled at a funny angle. Let's see, and then you have to make sure, cut the corner off. You have to get them all three lined up, so it takes a little bit of wiggling and did you guys know that the Toil and Trouble DSP, the designer series paper, the bat print, this punch lines up with those bats too. So that's another way you can use your bat punch. All right, so we've got the bats. Um, you know what, let's stamp our sentiment too while we're here and then we can put it all together. Mary says she loves deep purple tones for night skies. Yes, and you know what, I never would have really thought about that until I looked at those pictures. I was thinking, what I really kind of had in mind was a sunset, you know, um, but then it was all purple, so I thought, no, we're not gonna do that. All right, now you guys, get your trimmer. I'm just gonna use my scissors and cut the whisper white to the height of the word. See how it's just as high as the word is? And then over here on the left side, get your small scissors or your banner punch or your truly now what is it called? The ta Taylor Tag Punch. And punch a little flag here. It's just a scrap piece. I don't have a measurement on that. All right, so now we've got our pieces. Now this is the reason why I wanted to use stays on today. We're gonna take this stamp, which is like dust. <laughs> Maybe it looks like dust, but it's clouds. It's like the night spooky, spooky clouds. And I'm gonna stamp them overlapping that moon. And Memento would not have cut it for this job. I don't think it would have been dark enough. So you can kind of see how the clouds, they're, they're dark at night, they're not white. And the shadow goes across the moon there. It's very spooky. Okay, now let's put that. Did you guys see the Fast Fuse sale on the clearance rack? Is it still there? Does anybody know? Is it still there? Because you guys know how I feel about Fast Fuse. Here's my Fast Fuse. I have a secret drawer of Fast Fuse, and now I've added even more because they put Fast Fuse on the clearance rack yesterday. Hopefully you, you're on my email list and you got that email and you were able to order some. Um, it's awesome. And now I don't feel guilty about using it in my videos. <gasps> Trisha says the refill's still there. So are the full cartridges gone, Trisha? There we go. We're putting those bats with mini dimensionals. 
All right, now let's make our little holder. Need the stuff. Refills are there, still there. Just ordered more. What about the fulls? Or the, oh, they're gone. Okay. Well, if you don't have the full ones, you're out of luck. But if you need refills, go get them because they're cheap. I, don't, I think what were they? Three fifty. All right. This is a piece of basic gray. Let me look at my notes. It is seven by three and a half, and we're going to score it at three and three and a half and six and a half. Pretty simple scoring on this one. And we're gonna burnish all those lines. Let's go ahead and put this on the front side, right here. I did this the other way in the video. If you watch it, you'll see. All right, so that's how it folds down, like that. Now, you wanna get your little sticky hand, or whatever you decide to put in here. And these, I, I designed this to fit this package, um, but you can see how there's a lot of like empty space. So I finagled them up to fit up in there and I folded that back a little bit. And then I'm gonna put that right here under this lip. Okay, little snake guy. Sometimes you have to kind of squeeze them out so they'll go where you need them to go. All right, so I'm gonna fold it, put it there, and then I'm gonna fold this little this little, we have this half inch flap right here. I'm gonna make sure it's all the way to the bottom. We need to leave room for this to slide in there. So you want it all the way to the bottom. Then get a stapler and do your staples at the bottom. You kind of have to watch it to make sure that you catch it, okay? So then it's in there like that. See how that works? Now, I don't like for those staples to show, so I have a half inch strip of Blackberry Bliss DSP from the Regals pack. And I'm just gonna put that right there. And then we'll tuck that right behind. There we go, like that. Now, one last thing, of course, is the bow. Pineapple Punch. We used Pineapple Punch embossing powder and now we're using a Pineapple Punch 1 8 inch grain ribbon and we will put this down there at the bottom. These are fun. That bag is, I'm telling you guys, if you need a cheap Halloween treat, maybe for a carnival, I know our neighborhood is having a little um, Halloween party. They were $6 and there's 50 of them in there and it's something different than candy. You know, I love candy. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes we need something a little bit different. Okay, so there it is. What do you guys think? Fun, right? And spooky with a spooky night sky. I love that one. And I love to use that design, that matchbook design. I think that's really an easy way if you find treats or something that you want to make a holder for that's kind of flat. That's an easy, easy one to make. Um, just a little matchbook. Okay, great. Now let me move this out of the way and I will grab our third project. I'm doing pretty good on time today. 20 minutes before pickup, car, parent pickup. Let me tell you guys, I've been doing carpool for middle school one day a week, and I've only done it three times now, and it makes me want to homeschool my child. That is the most stressful, nerve-wracking parent pickup situation I have ever dealt with. <laughs> That's on Mondays. It makes for a very bad Monday. Okay, you guys, so the last thing I'm showing you is this adorable tiny treat box, and I was gonna put the other two. I've made two other ones. This is the takeout treat box, takeout, takeout box framelits. And here's the size. Um, they're small, can you guys see how small they are? Which I like, because then you're not spending a fortune filling it up. And um, this is the one we did for Stamp Club. And this is the one that goes with my, um, cauldron bubble class. They're really cute and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put together and I'm also gonna show you how to do this window in here. Um, this is kind of a stepped up version and it makes it a little more complicated, um, but it's fun. All right, so let me show you the framelits. They look like this. You get this one, this is your framelit box and you need to cut two of these. This is the window that we're gonna cut out and then I'm gonna use this little tag right here. Here's the cute stamp set, and that you can use it for all, um, all year. It's got Christmas, um, 
lots of love that love you lots that would be great for valentine's day um hearts holly candy just for birthdays so i think this is a and the star that would be great for like a little football party um i think this is a great set not just for the holidays okay before we start i'm gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment that way when i have the big shot over here i can just cut it all out at the same time well not at the same time but i won't have to get the big shot out twice i'm just using a real simple enjoy the enjoy sentiment all right so if you're wondering how many of these you can get out of a full sheet of cardstock you can get two boxes two complete boxes out of a full sheet because the like i told you you have to cut this twice all right and you can get it on a half sheet of cardstock two times if that makes sense all right so if you turn it this way like a backwards l we're gonna cut the first one How many of you have this? Have you played with it? It's so fun. You know, you know me, I am immediately zone in on those 3D dies when we get them. All right, and then this one goes like this. Now, while I'm cutting this one, I'm, I'm gonna cut that window. And this is the, what the window looks like. And I'm gonna put it over here on the bigger rounded side. Well, and here's the, here's the, the catch we've got to find a spot where our magnets aren't going to push it around and make us crazy all right we'll do it like that there we go all right so slide that in and you can cut out nina what are you saying all school parent drop-off lines should have a large sign at the beginning stating that oh and facebook is not showing me the rest of everybody's comments but I'm sure that I agree with you. What I would like is for my child to just ride the bus. <laughs> I don't want any part of that. It is so crazy. The very first day, my daughter's in sixth grade, and so I had Monday carpool duty. So I was the guinea pig, and I, the, the, the police officer that's there directing traffic, oh, I still need that. He yelled at me because I did whatever I wasn't supposed to do. I picked them up in the wrong place, and he stopped traffic and came over and yelled at me in front of, the five kids in my car and all the other moms in line. It was not a good day. This is a window sheet. So we sell this. It's called window sheets and it's just a sheet of acetate. I'm gonna run it through right here because this is where I need it. It is not gonna cut this out, but it's gonna show me where I can take my scissors and cut it out, okay? The reason it's not gonna cut it out is because those are score lines. Well, Trisha, you know, we have buses, but that's a whole nother debacle. The middle school bus that comes out to our neighborhood, we actually have two. And the one that we have one specifically for our street and our kids don't get home until five o'clock if they ride that bus, um, which is half an hour after the high schoolers. So then they're on 45 minutes in the morning to school and 45 minutes to an hour on the way home. And it's just not fair for our kids. But anyway, that's just neither here nor there, and it, if I start talking about it, I'll get mad. Okay, so see how that cut that out? I know where I need to cut it. It's gonna fit behind that window perfectly. My kids for the last four years have been going to the neighborhood school here. Um, so we walk to school in the mornings and then I just, um, it's half a mile, run up and get them and it's super easy. I didn't know. And, last, and my high schooler loved riding the bus. It was like social time for her, so we never had to deal with this. All right, we need to um, adhere this on the inside, this window sheet. Now, I would recommend that you use liquid adhesive like the fine tip glue pen or your Tombow. However, you guys know my relationship with liquid glue is not a positive one. I'm a hot mess. So for the video, I'm gonna use glue dots but I do not recommend using glue dots. I don't know how well that would hold if you had a bunch of candy corn in here. All right, so see there we have that. And these are going to go together like this. So you're going to want this big part, this big side opposite the other big side. And I'm going to just put a little bit of fast fuse here. Put these here like that. Now I'm gonna use tear and tape on these tabs. Tear and tape, of course, is the strongest adhesive that we have. Um, and it, well, it's not liquid adhesive. <laughs> so that's winning in my column because I don't like liquid adhesive. Yeah, your Tombow would probably be okay if you're good with Tombow on this. Um, but it also is the perfect width of the tabs. 
All right, so we'll put, we put a, um, tear and tape on all four of those tabs. And I'm gonna burnish all these lines. Now, here's the one thing that you have to tweak when you do a box with a window. So we're gonna take the tabs and we're going to adhere them, but look what happens when we have a, um, the window. Can you guys see? The tab shows through. So just for that one tab, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut it in half, long ways. So now it's that long, narrow tab and, oh, good grief. Come on, tear and tape. And then I'm gonna just start adhering the tabs behind each side. So see how that works? I think the longest part of this project, if you were gonna make a bunch of them, is peeling off all the backs of your tear and tape. So if you're good with liquid glue, it might go faster for you that way. But if I was to do these with liquid glue, we would have it all over me, all over the table. So I have to stick with my tear and tape. All right, come on, goodness. I've never had that much trouble. Okay, there we go. We've got all the tabs folded in. Fill it with your candy. And I don't have any more candy corn here. That candy corn here in this one is actually probably three or four years old. It's been in my candy cabinet. These little, these little slits just slide together like that, just like a takeout container from the Chinese food place. Isn't that so cute? So cute. All right, pretend like it has all the candy corn in it. Now here's the Toil and Trouble DSP. See there, there's the brooms. And I love these pumpkins, but I am sad that we don't have framelits to go with them, but that's okay. We all know how to fussy cut. We're gonna go old school and use your tiny, tiny scissors, the smallest you have, and just cut around that, that pumpkin. They're all different, the pumpkins are different, so you can choose which one you like. And just leave that a little bit of a cloud, is what I call it, a little bit of a cloud on the outside of your image. That way, if you mess up, nobody's gonna notice because they're looking at the edge of the pumpkin and not the white edge. All right. Oh, Melissa says she used liquid glue and it went fast. My tear and tape just arrived, so I'll try it. Well, I, I bet liquid glue would be better, um, except mine, I stamped that and then I forgot to cut it, you guys. So we do have to get the big shot back out. Ugh. I, if I was to use, I don't know what it is because I really do like both our liquid glues, but I have such a heavy hand. I get way too much every single time. All right, remember how I was saving us a step when I stamped that? I just started talking about carpool and I got all flustered. <sighs> My middle child, I love her to death, but she's my high maintenance child. And if she were on the bus for an hour when it's 98 degrees, I would live to regret it. <laughs> I mean, I don't want her on, a, on the bus like that. Ellie was fine, my oldest, because it was social time for her. She got to hang out with her friends and do all that. But Emma's a different kid. She, she would not enjoy any of that. All right, so a dimensional there. Some black baker's twine. I'm gonna make my bow kind of large. Not that large, but I want it larger than the bat because we're gonna put the bat in the center of this bow. And stick that on with a glue dot. If you have your take, the, take your pick tool, which I cannot for the life of me remember to use, Put it right there over that little hole in the tag. All right, so there's that. And then we need our bat. And Alessandra, I don't even see what, what is 99 cents at the Dollar Tree, I need to look. All right, I'm just cutting that bat right there. The little erasers, I need to go look. You guys, I'm gonna have to go back and read. All right, one more glue dot on our little bat and he's gonna go right in the middle of the bow and that's it. So not a whole lot of uh, work to get this once you've got, gotten it made. Um, and if you wanted to leave the window out, you could just put that pumpkin right there in the middle. Isn't that so cute? I just love that takeout treat box. And I'm going to start a campaign that they better make it stay, better carry over to the annual catalog because it's awesome. 
All right, you guys, we are done. And I finished early today. I have seven minutes. Wow. And I thought these were kind of complicated projects. All right, let's do our review. Here we go. All of our spooky bats. Um, I had, you know what? I packed a whole bunch of projects to take to Michigan tomorrow. And um, I have some other spooky bats, things that I was going to show you, but they're all packed. You'll see them. You'll see them. Don't worry. That spooky bats, you guys, that punch is one that you need. You can do so much with it, even without stamping. Um, and I have seen some really cute things with people using them in different colors. Um, so I think you need to add it to your order for sure. Think about a scrapbook page. I was thinking about a scrapbook page with bats that just like went up the side, like they were flying off and that dark purple. Wouldn't that be awesome? Because it really creates movement. The way that they've shaped them creates that movement, like they're moving. All right, you guys, don't forget that if you want to register for that, um, cauldron bubble class, you need to do it. ASAP. I only have a limited a number um, for that class because the framelits have already gone on back order. Dinah. Dinah's asking me which framelit did I use for the tag. It's part of the takeout treats um, treat box framelits. Let me put them all back together. Maybe I didn't say that. I'm sorry. Um, here it is right here. See these all go with the, the takeout box and they also match the stamps. Here's the heart the star, this, I don't know, that looks like football to me if you did that. And then a star, very football. It reminds me of the Dallas Cowboys, I don't know why. All right, and then the holly, there's a little holly. So that's where that tag is from. Okay, oops. I think I might have accidentally left a sad face on somebody. All right, what, um, I have to see what idea. Angela says maybe Erica will test that idea for us. Mm. Now, I did, you know what? Oh, you guys, I have not been reading your comments. What is happening? I missed all this discussion about candy. Um, I, somebody who I'm friends with, Melody Hyde, she's a Stampin' Up! concept artist she's a lead concept artist at Stampin' Up posted the other day on her Facebook page how she made a little tiny like a tiny one and then a medium one and then this one and then one bigger so I need to do that I need to figure out that for you guys because that then you could really alter all the different ways to use that so fun I love when we can figure out different ways to use those framelits and really get a lot of use out of them all right you guys well um I hope you enjoyed it don't forget Get your PDF. Where's my PDF? How do I lose the PDF every week? Oh, no, every week. I mean, I was using it. <laughs> Here it is, it's on the other tray. Go over to my blog, print off the PDF or save it to your computer so you can make these three projects. All the information here is listed for the class, for the tutorial bundle and for Stamp Club. And here's the hostess code. Put in your order by Monday at midnight and I will send you all three projects for free. All right, you guys, now next week, Friday is my birthday. So I'm kind of thinking I might reschedule next week to Thursday. Um, that's tentative, so you'll have to watch my Facebook group to see. I um, may go get a pedicure on my birthday. I may treat myself during the day without my kids, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, so stay tuned and watch my group. I'll share some pictures from my weekend in Michigan, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be lots of fun inspiration. All right, you guys, have a great week, and I will be back next week. Don't forget to enter for the prize. Bye.